All right, good morning everybody. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Welcome to another session here on Facebook Live. My name is Patrick France, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Glad to be with you all. Good morning, Hang, Hassan, Carrington, welcome. Benny, hello, hopefully you guys are doing well. Good morning, Jamie. Uh, seeing a lot of people chiming in, awesome. Glad to have you all here, welcome. If you're new, uh, just to give you a little insight, every single Thursday we go live here on Facebook where we talk specifically on the mobile app Today we're gonna to be talking about how to reduce your risk utilizing ETFs, but we cover many different topics all across the board. So if you're looking to improve on your investing, improve on your trading, this is definitely the right place to be. Um, before we get started, just wanna make sure that you guys can hear me. So if the sound is coming through for you guys. Uh, if you guys can hear me and seeing everything, let me know, uh, that way we can get started there. Awesome. Seeing a lot of familiar faces, a lot of new faces. Glad to have everybody here. Hopefully you all are doing well. Uh, Today is going to be an awesome session. So, um, you know, you're in the right spot if you want to learn how to improve on your vesting, how to reduce your risk utilizing ETFs. And really, if you're new to trading in general, what ETFs are, if you're not familiar with them, and how they work exactly. So, uh, awesome. Thank you guys for the confirmation. Thank you guys for that. Um, with that, let's go ahead. We'll take a look at what's going on here in the market today, and then we'll jump into our topic. And then as always, we like to finish off at the very end where we'll analyze any stock that you want to take a look at in less than 20 seconds. So if you guys uh, are interested, if you're not already a subscriber and you want to see how the analysis works, how we analyze stocks, stick around at the very end where you'll be able to see how we analyze your own stocks and how quickly and easily you can get actual usable information rather than just scads of data that you'd have to analyze on your own. All right, so awesome. Thank you guys for that. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it here today. So as we can see today, the market is neutral. We're three ticks into the yellow and right below that tells us we don't, or Vectorus advocates caution when buying stocks at this time. As we mentioned every week, whenever we see caution, we always like to check the advances to declines. The market's moving higher we like to see twice as many stocks advancing than declining and since the market's moving lower today we like to see twice as many stocks declining than advancing so if we scroll down to the very bottom we get the advanced declines right now we're sitting about 28 percent of stocks moving higher and about 60 percent of stocks moving lower so that meets that two to one uh, declines to advances bias that we like to see Therefore, if you're uh, bearish in the market, you're wanting to in enter into a position or maybe a hedge adding into your portfolio, today could definitely be a day that we could do that. So, uh, Cody, yes, Cody, we can analyze Apple. Um, just stick around to the end and we'll analyze any stock that you guys want to take a look at there. So, before we jump into that though, let's take a look at the color guard real quick, make sure everybody's on the same page, and especially if you're new, understanding or making sure that you understand how to really read the color guard. So that gauge we just looked at gets its colors from that top row of lights here in the color guard. We analyze the market using three key indicators every single day. The price, which is the arithmetic index to average of about 8,300 stocks in the US market, Rather than just tracking the Dow's 30 or the NASDAQ's 100 or the S&P's 500, we feel that the VectorVest composite gives us a better representation on what's actually going on in the market. The second is the RT, which is cast on a scale of 0 to 2, and it's looking at the short-term price trend in the market. So above one, the short-term trend is up. Below one, the short-term trend is down. At one exactly, that tells us the market is flat right now. The short-term trend is neutral. Then we look at the BSR, the buy to sell ratio. So here at VectorVest, every single day, we give a buy, hold, and sell rating on every single stock that we track. We utilize the difference, or we utilize the ratio between the buys and the sells to understand the health of the market. If there's more stocks that have a buy than a sell, the buy to sell ratio will be above one, as it is now 1.46, and that tells us that there's still overall market strength. Or if another way of looking at it is that there's more stocks currently participate, or participating in the market than not participating. However, if we look at the longer term trend of that, we can see that that has been uh, slowly dissipating here over the last few weeks. And then all three of these indicators are comprised to come up with the MTI or the market timing indicator. This is looking at the underlying trend of the market. It's going to be on a scale of zero to two. So above one, the underlying trend is up. Below one, the underlying trend is down. At 1.42, we can see the underlying trend in the market still remains up. 
After that, we then get the trend where we show the weekly trend and also the underlying trend. So since the market is higher on a week over week basis, the under or the uh, weekly trend is up. And then since the MTI is above one, the underlying trend is also up. But then for our most conservative investors, we have the calls column, which stands for our confirmed calls. Now, this is our last line defense. This is gonna be our last signal we get to get into the market and our last signal we get to get out. Therefore, we never want to ignore a confirmed call change. As you can see though, for our most conservative investors, we still remain in that up situation currently. Um, see Jay, awesome, thank you Jay. Love this app, glad to hear it. Um, also guys, you know, every single week we do go live. So if you want to continue to grow the group, continue to get uh, your input uh, heard and get other input heard to figure out, you know, what could we do better in the app to make it the most comprehensive app out there for you for your trading. Uh, don't forget to share and like this video. Send it out to all your friends, family, everybody. That way we can continue to grow the group and continue to, uh, you know, get the most feedback possible because, you know, the feedback that I get here from our weekly sessions does go into uh, you know the development process of what we look at when coming up with new functions, new features that could really benefit you. So you know if you haven't already shared the video, make sure to do so. Um, why can't I see the video? Uh, not sure there, Ked. Um, everybody else seems to have have no issues with that. Um, is this time right for country ETFs to buy now or wait? So Sam, we'll definitely take a look. Glad to see you here though today. Um, awesome, Brandon says he uses the app every day. Hey, that's what we like to hear. All right, so we've analyzed the market. We see what's going on. You know, overall the market, you know, has really been flat, slightly lower on a longer term basis or over the last, you know, month or so, but uh, overall flat for the last week or so. Um, we see that the decliners are still picking up, advances continuing to dissipate here. And then we get the indices. So the Dow's down over 1% so far for the day. NASDAQ, whoo, down through almost three and a half percent so far. NASDAQ's getting hit pretty hard here today. S&P's down uh, 1.8%, and then overall vector best composite down 1.7% for the session. Um, so I see a lot of people asking about analyzing some stocks. So if you're an, if you want some help with analyzing your stocks, make sure to stick around to the end. As always, we save those to the very end where we'll analyze any stock that you want to take a look at. So don't worry, I'm not trying to uh, ignore any of you guys. Um, just letting you know, if you want to analyze your stocks, just make sure to stick around and we'd be glad to do so here for you. All right. So with that, uh, <laughs> appreciate that Diego uh, so with that let's go ahead and jump into the topic here today so everybody uh, for the most part is familiar with ETFs if you're not an ETF stands for an exchange traded fund essentially what it is it's like buying a basket of stocks and instead of buying the best and or just the best stock or the worst stock you're buying the average of that basket so the easiest way or the most uh, familiar way a lot of people have uh, or can relate to is the S&P 500. Instead of buying a share of every single stock out of the 500, you can buy an ETF that's like buying all 500 stocks in one. So the great thing about ETFs with this strategy or with this kind of mindset is that, you know, yeah, you're not going to be holding the best one at any given time when it's blasting off. So you're going to miss out on some of that gain. But if that does come tumbling back down, you're not going to be affected as much because you're going to be holding other stocks as well that will nicely offset that. So you're buying the average. So, you know, you're not going to necessarily outperform some of the major indices, but at the same time, you're not going to see those huge losses that can happen in individual stocks where they drop all of a sudden overnight 20% or greater just because of, you know, a bad word they said in an earnings announcement. So it does allow you to minimize some of that risk where you can take advantage of major areas in the market, but still avoid some of the pitfalls of having uh, of having earnings announcement plays or trying to play that earnings call and, you know, betting whether the stock's going to go up or go down. Uh, what goes up must go down and vice versa. Exactly. You know, you have to have sell-offs in the market to create better buying opportunities to get people to jump back in. You know, market rides in waves. I see a lot of people worried about the market going down today. Um, 
you go, you know, we've been talking about it the last few weeks. If you want to stay up to date with the market, make sure to uh, tune in every week because we do talk about what's going on in the longer term trends here. Uh, but with that, um, you know, the market goes in waves. It goes up for a little bit, then comes back down, goes up higher, then comes back down a little bit, goes up higher, then comes back down a little bit. So we have to have pullbacks to keep, uh, you know, buying coming back into the market. Um, so don't panic necessarily with, with the drop that we're seeing in the NASDAQ. You know, it's been the best performer, so it's going to have the bigger move to the downside. You know, the the one that's most overbought, which has been the NASDAQ since the lows back in March, is going to have the bigger drawdowns or bigger pullbacks when the market does sell off. So keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, it is mainly tech stocks. And what has been performing the best? Tech stocks, especially with the shutdowns, um, you know, people staying at home more. Everybody's on their computers or technology. They're using Zoom meetings. They're ordering things from Amazon rather than going out and buying it from stores. So, yeah, there's no surprise that the NASDAQ has been one of the best performers. But when you see any signs of weakness, expect to see the NASDAQ take the bigger hit. That should be no surprise uh, when looking or analyzing what's going on in the market right now. Doesn't mean it's a bubble. Doesn't mean it's, you know, getting ready to tumble or tank. It just means that, you know, it's been a little overbought, especially as, you know, they're coming out with more and more data saying the vaccine's going to be here soon. More people are going to be able to get back out and open there or back out in the open and things are going to go back to normal, quote unquote normal here, um, you know you're going to see some of those people taking profits because people aren't going to rely on those tech stocks nearly as much anymore when things go back to the way they were before uh back in 2019 (laughs) let's just put it that way all right so now we've got that hopefully everybody calm down a little bit on that because we understand that is a little worrisome but don't panic vector vest is here for you let's go ahead and take a look So we have a lot of different ways to analyze ETFs or a lot of different lists to analyze ETFs in the VectorVest Stock Advisory. One that I did here today, I built it up uh, when I was thinking about today's topic and, and, you know, wanting to come up with something a little bit different, but we have a lot of questions on ETFs every single week. So I figured this would be, you know, applicable to everybody here. And that's taking a look at a watch list that I built. And anybody has the ability to do this. Um, If you're new to the app and you haven't built a watch list before, that's okay. We have plenty of videos on how to build a watch list, even built into the app itself. But essentially what I've done is, you know, I took a few broad market areas. So for example, silver, the NASDAQ, industrials, consumer staples, uh, S&P 500, gold miners, because gold has been huge this year. Uh, You have the Russell, you have healthcare, Um, You have foreign markets with EFA, you have gold, and then utilities. So I've gotten a bunch of different areas of the market, but instead of having to buy all the stocks from all those specific areas, I can buy an ETF that'll help me analyze just that one specific, or help me, uh, you know, diversify myself, but still capture some of the moves in that area just by buying one stock rather than buying a basket of stocks. So it's a great way to help you, you know, really spread your risk out. Once again, you're not going to be buying the best stock in the in the basket, so therefore, you know, you're going to be missing out from outperforming the overall ETF or the overall uh, area of the market. But you're also not going to be risking potentially getting into one of the worst stocks in that uh, that industry or sector. So therefore, you. Uh, don't have to worry about, you know, that 20, 30% drop or the stock really just not participating at all. Um, anyway, let's see. Are these live videos archived? Yes, they are, Josh. Great, uh, great question. All of them are found on our live section of our Facebook page. So after today's session, it will be on there. You can go back and watch any of the live streams we've ever done here. All right. So we have a few different areas that we can take advantage of. Um, for example, you know, the NASDAQ. We take a look at it. I know everybody's been talking about it. It's down pretty big here today. But overall, we see, actually, we see a nice steady run. This is a one-year time frame. Let's go to six months. So for the NASDAQ ETF, it was trading about $180 to $170 at its lows. Right now, it's trading at $290 a share. 
We saw some weakness coming in based off the candlesticks, which if you've been in here before, you know what kind of candlestick patterns we're looking for here because we've talked about those. Then the pullback today. So yeah, it's down 3.5%, but it's up, what is that, just shy of 100% over the last six months. So 3.5% is very minimal when compared to uh, you know the 100, almost 100% 100 that it's had. This is what is great about utilizing graphs, utilizing ETFs. You know, everybody keeps talking about Tesla. So let's just go ahead and take a look at it. TSLA. Well, I won't analyze it right now, but just want to pull it up. So if you were just holding Tesla right now, you'd be down almost 8% here for the day. But instead of that, you're buying a basket of them and down about half of that. So it's definitely reduced your risk and allowed you to make smarter decisions. Whenever you see a stock and it's down almost 8%, yeah, you could probably panic and allow your emotions to get involved and allow your emotions to make the decision rather than your trading plan. Well, when you're in an ETF and you have uh, reduced risk and you're only down, let's say, half of that, at this stage, you see that you're worried, but you're not panicking nearly as much and you have a clearer head to be able to make this smart decision. And this gives you a little bit more leeway to make that decision. You don't have to immediately see it and say, oh, I need to sell, I need to sell. You can see this, say, okay, let's look at the chart, let's analyze it, let's see what's going on. What is my objective? What were my plan or what were my rules that I had in place that I wanna follow? Um, you know, if you're using stop criteria, has that stop criteria been met? If you're using the 50% rule, has that 50% rule been met? Most likely, the answer is going to be no. Unless you just got in the last couple of days when we've seen overall weakness, we've been talking about, you know, be careful. If you've been doing that, then maybe you're down 50% already um, from when you purchased it uh, of your total gain. But most likely, you're not. 3.6% is not going to be, you know, half of what type of gain you had there already. So it gives you a little bit more time to make a clearer, smarter decision for yourself. And then going into it, you know, analyzing it, are you a longer term investor or are you a short term investor? Are you a trader or are you just, you know, holding or uh, trading for retirement or investing for retirement? If you're a short term trader, you see this, you see some candlestick patterns that may tell you, hey, I may want to get out, may want to switch my position or just maybe reduce or tighten up my stop on this position. Or if you have a lot of stocks that are in the NASDAQ, you could say, okay, well, maybe I need to pick up a country ETF to start hedging some of these because I don't really want to sell out and take the, you know, the tax deduction or the tax hit right now. Um, let's see. Give me one second here. There we go. So you don't want to necessarily sell out of the stock, but you want to you wanna reduce your risk. So another way of doing that is by utilizing ETFs as well to help uh, hedge your bet, if you will. Now, VectorVest has a lot of places to find great opportunities to hedge your, hedge your portfolios. One of the easiest places is going under the picks. Below that, you can go to the premium watch list. Let's go ahead, open that up. go this way and here you have indexed ETFs bullish and indexed ETFs bearish now if you're worried about the market coming tumbling down which I mean it could definitely have a sell-off so for the short-term pullback you want to make some money on or you want to hedge your uh, potential candidates or your stocks from take a look at the ETFs bearish here you have one on the Russell, the Dow, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and these are gonna be a mixture of, of single, doubles, and triple leverage ETFs here for you. So this could be a great way if you're you know really worried about that, or that Tesla position, maybe picking up a, a ETF on the NASDAQ. Um, if you're you know longer term in, or longer term investor, most likely you're gonna focus on the single leverage or PSQ, for example. If you're looking to turn a profit in a pullback, then you're gonna assume that you're gonna be increasing your risk a little bit, trying to find something 
um, that has more leverage that's going to outpace the pullback in Tesla. So you may look at, let's say, SQQ, which is a triple leverage ETF. Or if you're just in the middle ground, you're not quite sure about it, you could also look at QID, which is a double leverage ETF. So if you're not familiar with leverage, what it means is that, you know, as the NASDAQ pulls back, let's say 1%, a double leverage is going to move 2% of that and a triple leverage is going to move 3% of that. So these are great ways to hedge your bets. Or you can also go into this uh, market watch list and take a look at the ETF pairs bearish and bullish. Right now, the market's been on a tear. Market's been uh, just shy of hitting a brand new high. So yeah, ETF pairs bullish is definitely leading the charge. Well, if you're looking to bottom fish or just looking to find something that's cheap that could potentially offset a pullback or offset uh, any losses in your portfolio from a pullback, take a look at the bearish or bearish positions. Here you have some on oil, uh, biotechs, which, you know, biotechs have been helping the NASDAQ significantly with the race for the vaccine for COVID-19. Uh, biotech stocks have been outperforming left and right here this year. Well, what happens if all of a sudden the vaccine really isn't necessary or, um, you know, it, it's we the uh, the country reaches herd immunity or other countries reach herd immunities, as they say on TV or the talking heads on TV talk about all the time. And, you know, it just turns out to be another thing like the flu. What if a vaccine isn't necessarily needed as urgently as everybody's expecting? Biotechs could take a pretty big hit there. And we see biotechs are actually down about 8.5%, or uh, the ETF, LABD, which is a inverse ETF on that, um, is up about 8.5% here. Then you have gold. Uh, you have Yang, which is in you know a China ETF. Financials coming in. The Dow, S&P, uh, gold miners, semiconductors, which tech once again. Uh, NASDAQ and then silver. So you have a lot of different areas of the market that you can utilize how to or to hedge your portfolio if, if you feel comfortable with that or if you're not comfortable with the market continuing to rock and roll here. Now, you may ask yourself, where do I go or how do I uh, choose an ETF? The answer is simple. Stick with what you're familiar with. If you're not, if you don't keep up with what's going on in China every single day, don't pick an ETF that's based off the Chinese economy. Simple as that. If you primarily just trade tech stocks, if you're a short-term trader, primarily just trade tech stocks, choose something you're familiar with. Stick with the NASDAQ or semiconductors or whatever area that you're most comfortable with. All of that can greatly help you out there. Um, Jason is asking, is there a micro cap watch list? Not in the, uh, not built in the app automatically, um, but you could definitely build one there. There is in the VectorVest 7 program, Jason. So if uh, you have the desktop uh, program, you automatically get the app included. The desktop can be seen above me. Um, there is a micro cap watch list in there. It has not been transferred over to the mobile app. So um if you're just on mobile, you want to take a look at the desktop, see the differences that it could provide for you. Um, just simply give our support a call. They'd be glad to help you out there. Um, any comments on technology funds? Yeah, we've talked about the technology funds uh, quite a bit so far today here, Bill. Uh, if there's anything specific that you want me to address, by all means, let me know. Um, all right, so anybody have any questions so far with, you know, diversifying how to use ETFs, how they can benefit you, how they can, you know, help reduce your risk, but also, um, you know, reduce your emotions out of your investing. Because in all honesty, that's probably the biggest aspect of trading or biggest aspect of utilizing ETFs is the, is the ability that they give you to reduce your emotions, allow you to stay more systematic with your approach rather than Oh, you see a big move here today. You got to go make some make some changes automatically. Um, let's see. Can your premium on your mobile give access to the desktop? So no. Um, if you have if you have the desktop, you automatically get premium access on the mobile, um, but not vice versa. The desktop has a lot of extra functionality that just can't be um, 
can't be put into an app version uh, with current technology standards right now. Um, but yeah, so uh, hopefully that answers your question there. All right, so I see a lot of people have a lot of stocks they want to analyze. Let's go ahead. We'll jump right into it. Let's go ahead and take a look at that here today. Get it analyzed. Now, I will say, if you're already on the app, all you got to do is tap on the magnifying glass in the upper right-hand corner of any screen, type in the stock symbols, and enter in your stocks. You can do the same kind of analysis. If you're not already on the app, there is a link in the description of the video that you can click on, download it, uh, try it out for free for two weeks, and really put it to the test. As the old saying goes, seeing is believing. And once you put it to the test, there's no doubt in my mind, you're gonna wonder how you ever did your investing without having this side or sidekick to your investing. Um, you have predicted earnings on the mobile app. So Byron, our earnings per share number is a forecasted 12 months down the road, forecasted earnings per share blended with historicals. So therefore, um, you know, it's not just looking at just the predicted, it's looking at the forecasted based off major analysts out there, but also what they've done current or what they've been doing as well. So it gives you a better representation on their earnings by looking at our earnings rather than just going by, you know, what the this last statement showed. All right. Um, let's go ahead, take a look. So, uh, Carol saying I'm down 18% or 56K. So Carol, that tells me you need to come to these sessions a little bit more frequently. We've been talking about it for the last month or so, the bearish divergences that have happened, that have been going on in the market and why you should be even more careful, starting to tighten up your stops. We looked at it last week. The guidance that VectorVest has been giving has been telling you to take profits on up days and be very careful about getting into new positions. Um, if you're... If you're still holding stocks that are going down, you really need to give or uh, you know follow VectorVest, give our support a call, go through the initial getting started training session, and they will you know show you exactly what to utilize and how best to help you um, utilizing the app. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some stocks. Uh, let's go ahead. First one we got was NVAX. NVAX. So Novax, been on a pretty significant sell-off here off of those highs, but we use four indicators to analyze each and every stock every single day. The first indicator is the RV or relative value. This is looking at the long-term potential of the stock compared to a AAA corporate bond over the next one to three years. So 1.64 tells us it has great long-term potential. Looking at the RS, this is an indicator of risk. Below one tells us there is more risk associated with the stock. Above one tells us there is less risk associated with the stock. So NVAX, great long-term potential, but a lot of risk associated with it. Next indicator you need to know is timing. RT, the short-term price trend of the stock. Above one, uptrend. Below one, downtrend. 0.76 tells us this stock is in a downtrend. Now, once you own a stock, this is something important for everybody to remember. Once you actually own a stock, fundamentals or the RV and RS don't mean a thing to you. The only thing that really means anything to you is whether or not the stock is making you money. If the RT is below one that tells us the stock is not making us money, and it doesn't make sense to hold on to something that's losing us money. Nobody wants to buy into a losing asset. Simple as that. So RT becomes the most important indicator to focus on once you own a stock. Keep that in mind. So then all three of these are comprised to come up with the master indicator, BST, standing for value, safety, and timing. This is a great overall indicator to look at the stock from both a, phys or a technical and a fundamental basis. At 1.11, it's good, but not great. Um, and the timing's not there right now. So... While the stock has great long-term potential, it does have a lot of risk. It's in a strong down, or it's in a steady decline. Stock is favorable, but not by much. So, if you're owning it, RT being the most important factor tells us right now we should not be in it. Um, RKT, RKT, good long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. Even with the sell-off here today, it's still in an uptrend, but. Overall, the stock's favorable. I'd be careful on a stock that is aggressive like this. Um, 
Looks like it's only been trading for a couple of weeks now. This is a very speculative stock. Uh, one thing to take a look at. Change the indicator on the bottom to RT. Go back. RT plateaued around 1.6 or so and then has been declining here today. Probably an indication that you should be staying out of it. Um, you know, this is a speculative play. If you're not a speculative trader, stay away from it. Uh, how effective is RoboTrader? RoboTrader is great, Israel. Um, if you don't have time to watch your stocks throughout the day and you want something that will automatically uh, set your trades up for you, it is semi-auto currently. Um, we want to work towards a fully auto version of it. Um, we've been testing it in-house, but right now it is semi-auto, so you still have to confirm your trades. Um, but it's a great tool to help you stay systematic in your approach rather than emotional in your approach. All right, next one, apps, APPS. Oh, there we go. So APPS, good long-term potential, less risk associated with it, still in a short-term strong uptrend, so overall the stock is favorable. Let's look at what this stock has done. This stock has gone from $8 back at the beginning of June. Right now it's trading at 23. That's a multiple of three right there. Yeah, it's down 11% here today, but look at the bigger picture. You're still up almost 300% since it first started gapping up, first started running up back at the beginning of June. So what is that? Three months now, or two months, two full months, almost uh, a little over two months here. And it's gone up 300%. So 11% pullback is in the grand scheme of things is very minimal. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, by all means, you can take your profit or you can, uh, you know, close out or tighten up your stops. From a technical basis, you still have some support showing right around $20, $21 a share. Um, if it breaks that, that could be your technical indication of, hey, I need to get out of the position. But, I mean, from a stock going up 300% in two months, 11% pullback today is not a significant pullback. And that's not even based off of the high. That's just, uh, you know, that 300% is based off of where it's currently trading at, not based off the high that it hit just a couple of weeks ago. All right. Um, FNGD. Let's take a look. So this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be looking at the FANG stocks, but this is an inverse of the FANG stocks. Great. Uh, ETF to pick up on Jay. Thank you for pointing this out. If you're not familiar with an ETF, by all means, tap on the three little buttons in the upper right-hand corner and go to view report. In the report, it'll tell you right at the top, uh, BMO, Rex, Micro Sectors, FANG, so uh, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, Index, three times inverse leverage, ETN. So yeah, looking at um, just an inverse of the FANG stocks here. Um, and the thing with this is it's a bottom fishing search. So when you're looking at, or when this is a bottom fishing ETF, because as we know, the tech stocks have been going gangbusters here over the last six months. So this is a speculative play. As you can see, the RT is at 0.12 could be a decent hedge at only $9 a share could be a decent hedge. If you're worried about those main holdings there. Um, overall, it's not favorable because you're speculating still. It hasn't had enough consistency to tell us that, you know, this is now a time to be getting in, but this is a speculative trade. Um, let's see. Apple, let's go ahead, take a look. Apple taking a pretty big hit here today, down 7.5%. But once again, Taking or keep in mind the big picture of things. Seven and a half percent is nothing when you look at the recovery that it's had over the last six months. Seven and a half percent, if you got in yesterday, yeah, it's a pretty big hit. You don't want to take seven and a half percent right out of the gate. But if you look at what it's done, seven and a half percent is very minimal, and you should have some decent wiggle room or some decent gains already built into these stocks. Um, and seven and a half percent should not you know, make anybody too nervous about what's going on in the market or make anybody uh, have knee jerk reactions to this. 
So looking at the analysis, RV 1.18 tells us good long-term potential, solid fundamentals or less risk associated with the stock. You have a really nice strong uptrend on a short-term basis. Therefore, the stock's favorable. Uh, let's see, TDOC, Teladoc, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with this stock. It's been in a slight decline. Overall, the stock is not favorable. Um, DOYU, DOYU, good long-term potential, but a lot of risk associated with this stock. You're in a strong uptrend. Therefore, the stock's definitely favorable here. Uh, just be careful. I mean, with that strong uptrend, it's an aggressive stock. It can move quickly. Just be careful and make sure you time your entries and exits. Uh, let's see. OPK. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, OPK. There we go. So, cause it says sell, but I bought it at five. Okay. So you bought it at five, the stock's down at $3. The stop price or when it gets that sell rating here is set at 356. That is our final line in the sand. The sell price is based, or the stop price here is based upon a 13 week moving average that we adjust per the company's fundamentals. A 13 week moving average is fairly conservative. Most likely you will be getting out well before it ever hits that sell price or that sell rating there. With this being said, the stock has average long-term potential. It has a lot of risk associated with it. It's in a sharp decline. Overall, the stock is not favorable. Um, looking at it here, the stock, even at $3 a share, is still overvalued compared to its value of $271. Um, earnings, earnings yield is negative. Uh, you know, just analyzing everything about it. This is more of a speculative play than anything else. And when you set up stops, if you bought it at $5 a share, first off, I'm not going to get into all the, the details of them, but I will talk about them. Um, and then there is a video that we did talking about knowing when to sell. Um, and there's a few rules that we talked about for money management. First rule, the 1% rule. You never want to give back more than 1% of your overall portfolio value in any individual position. Rule number one. Rule number two, set yourself a target. When you hit that target, take your profit. Rule number three, the 50% rule. Simply put, anything over a 10% gain in a stock, never give back more than 50% of that gain. Those three rules should never allow you to get into OPK and be at $3 a share when you got into it at five. This is the stuff that VectorVest teaches that we try to get people to learn and help become more disciplined and more systematic. This is why I do these sessions every single week. This is why we've been around for over 30 plus years. Give our support a call. If you wanna watch those videos, definitely check those out on our live section on our Facebook page. All of that will help give you some idea and some criteria of how to you know, really adjust your trading plan to be more systematic and not emotional. Hoping and dreaming is not a successful trading plan. All right. Um, let's stop. Uh, Becker, not what stop percent do you recommend? Um, hopefully those rules just, just answered there. Carol, the sale, the sales growth is good. That's fine. The sales growth is good, but does it make sense to hold on to something that's continuing to lose money? And what is your trading plan? Does your trading plan tell you you should be getting into it or you should be getting out of it? All right, so BNTX. But once again, Carol, this is why we offer free coaching sessions to all of our subscribers, whether you've been with us for years and just want a refresher or you're brand new to the software. This is why we offer those sessions. I strongly urge you to give our support a call and go through the, uh, the training session and let them walk you through it Ask them your questions. Let them answer your questions. If you're not comfortable with the answer, if you're not sure of what the answers or what the answer they're trying to tell you is, speak up. Let them know. They'd be glad to, uh, you know, make sure that you fully understand what the information you're looking at and what that information is uh, telling you there. All right. Um, don't see that one. So let's go ahead. Docu. 
Um, so Brett, um, as we've talked about in the past, uh, you know, there's four ways to know when to sell or four no or ways to get ideas of when you should start protecting your profits. Most, you should always use stop criteria based upon the price that you paid for the stock. But if your stop criteria hasn't been met yet and you see the RT falling below one, that should be a clear warning sign that, hey, if you have a great gain, maybe you should consider taking it off the pro or taking it off the table or tightening up your stops. All right, so looking at DocU, DocU has decent, okay, long-term potential, but does have a lot of risk. Still in a steady uptrend overall, therefore the stock's still favorable, but be careful, it has a lot of risk involved with it. Um, DraftKing, don't know the name or don't know the ticker symbol, that's okay, because you can also look it up by the name of the stock as well. As you can see, I started typing in Draft, DraftKing comes up DKNG, DKNG, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk. You still have some strong uptrend right now, but not enough to make the stock favorable. It's a speculative trade. Um, how far does RT look back to give its reading? So Ben, there's lots of different periods that it analyzes, it's not just a set time frame. It's looking at the movement of the stock on a day-to-day -day basis, week over week, quarter over quarter. It's looking at a lot of different ranges. So um, the exact formula is proprietary on that, but it's not just looking at a set one set time frame there um, to help you analyze it. All right, uh, VZ, Verizon. Poor long-term potential, a little bit more risk associated with it, and a slight uptrend. Overall, the stock's about average. Um, UMC. UMC. Poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. Uh, stock's about flat, therefore the stock's not favorable overall. Uh, WKHS. Workhorse. Poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it, but still in a strong short-term uptrend. However, that is dissipating. Overall, stock's still favorable, but as a speculative play, is going to be a technical trade. Uh, so therefore, you're going to use technical analysis to help time that. Uh, did you talk about Tesla yet? We talked a little bit about it, but we didn't do the full analysis. So let's go ahead, analyze Tesla here. So Tesla, good long-term potential, strong fundamentals, consistently growing their earnings quarter over quarter, year over year, still in a really strong uptrend. Overall, the stock is favorable. Um, you know, let's take a look at what it's done. I'm sure everybody's familiar with it, but based off of this is a split adjusted price. I want to make sure everybody's clear because they did just have that split going on. The stock's gone from about $100 a share to $500 a share. In the last six months, folks, that's 500% that this stock has risen in six months. It's down 7.5% today. That's not that bad. Okay, so it's given up $100 out of the 500 total. Okay, so you're only up 400% instead of 500%. You still have plenty of time to make that decision on whether or not you should stay into it or you should just simply take your profit and wait for a better day to get back in. Yeah, it's down big here. It's down 7% today. But it's gone up 500% in six months. 7% in the grand scheme of things is very minimal. Keep that in mind. All right, CVS. CVS, good long-term potential. Does have some additional risk associated with it, though. It's in a steady decline, so therefore the stock is average, not great. Um, REFR. REFR, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. It's in a steady decline. Therefore, the stock is definitely not favorable. Um, FIVN, poor long-term potential, pretty solid fundamentals though. Um, it's in a slight uptrend. Therefore, the stock's favorable, but not by much. Um, OAS, OAS. Okay, long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. It's in a steady decline, or it's free-falling essentially here. Therefore, the stock is not favorable. Um, 
Let's see, getting a lot of duplicates now. So let's try to find ones. Uh, do you think the Canadian marijuana sector will ever come back? I only hold one now. It's in retail. Um, 58 cannabis stores, 30 more in develop Ontario alone. Um, so Johnny, you know, we can, we can speculate all we want, but speculating is not a consistent long-term trading plan. Um, you know, wait until that's why at vector best, the best way to answer this is that's why here at vector best, we are trend followers and we let the trend be our friend. Here at VectorVest, we do not try to predict what the markets are going to do or where they're heading. We simply analyze the trends and follow those trends and take advantage of those trends while they last. Yeah, the marijuana sector in Canada had a great time a few years ago. But like all good things, they come to an end at some point. They may come back, they may not. Wait, it you're it's more of an opportunity that you're losing out on rather than necessarily a um, capital loss because that money that you have tied up in those uh, marijuana stocks, um, you know, could be used in other stocks during the time that the marijuana stocks aren't doing anything. That money could be trade or be put into stocks that are going up, that are participating in the market, that will continue to grow your account. So when the marijuana stocks are ready to start going again, and when they start taking off again, you have more money to put into those positions to get even bigger returns. Um, so you're, it's you know a lot. It's not necessarily a loss in capital because I don't know the, the when you got in all that. It's more of a loss of opportunity keeping your cash tied up into stocks that aren't doing anything. All right, um, Alex, so uh, candlesticker.com is a great website, uh, but we also did one, uh, we've done a lot of live streams on reading charts, so definitely take a look at some of the previous videos that we've done on those. Um, you can get a lot of insight on you know how to get started with charts and how to read charts just by watching some of the, our live streams that we've had. Um, let's see, HMY. HMY, you have good long-term potential, does have a little bit more risk associated with it. On a short-term basis, you have a strong upward trend. Therefore, the stock's still favorable. Um, SDC. SDC, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk. However, you have a really strong short-term uptrend. Therefore, the stock's favorable right now. Um... UAVS, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it, uh, short-term uptrend, but not enough to really make the stock favorable, stock's still about average, but speculative stock nonetheless. Um, ADT, ADT, good long-term potential, but a lot of risk associated with this stock, short-term trend is neutral, therefore the stock's a little bit better than average, but not great. Um, FLGT, FLGT, good long-term potential, does have a lot of risk associated with it though. It's in a slight upward trend on a short-term basis, therefore the stock is favorable. Um, Macy's is just M. Macy's, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. You do have a slight uptrend on a short-term basis. Unfortunately, not enough to offset the risk involved with this stock, so therefore it is not favorable. All right, so we'll do one more, then we're going to wrap it up here for today. SRNE. SRNE, good long term potential, but does have a lot of risk associated with it. It's in a steady free fall right now, therefore the stock is not favorable. Now, if I didn't get to your stocks, I do apologize, but once again, all you have to do anywhere from inside the app, if you're already a subscriber, is pull up the app. Tap on the magnifying glass in the upper right, type in your ticker symbol. You can do the same kind of analysis. If you're not already a subscriber, click on the link in the description of this video, download it, give it a or, uh, give it a two week free trial, try it out, seeing is believing. Now, if you've enjoyed today's session, you haven't already hit that like button, hit that share button, make sure to do so right now. If you haven't already turned on notifications to the VectorVest Facebook page, go ahead over to the Facebook page, hit the like, Turn on notifications so that way you stay up to date with every time we go live. Uh, any updates to that, what we're talking about, um, all of that will be, you'll keep up to date with. 
Um, and also, as a side note, if you like what we're talking about here but want to see more of the desktop application, make sure to go to our YouTube page as Glenn Tompkins Jr., another senior instructor like myself, uh, goes over. He has training Tuesdays on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and then trending Thursdays at 2 p.m. as well on our uh, YouTube page. So if you haven't already gone over there, make sure to go over there, subscribe, like, turn on notifications so you get all the information to help give you the best education and not just the best education, the best free education that you're going to be able to find anywhere at any point. So on that note, once again, we can see the market's getting more and more bearish. We're starting to see some red lights appearing in the price in the RT. Primary waves turned it down. Buy to sell ratio getting closer to that level of one. Decliners grossly outpacing the advances. So market's definitely taking some bigger hits right now. Be careful out there, but don't panic sell or don't panic trade. Keep your emotions in check. Follow your plan. Trade your plan. It's the best thing you could possibly do. And on that note, it's been my pleasure being with you all today. Once again, my name is Patrick France, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. I hope you all have a great rest of your trading session. Take care, and we'll see you all next week at 11 a.m. Eastern. Bye for now, everybody.